ko te waka hui ia, he kai kau he kōrero, he kai hāpā e mā tauranga, he kai te aki tāonga. Mau ana ko te tapu o ngā tāonga tukuiho, ko tā te waka hui ia, he hono i te hā o tua whakarere ki ngā pātaka mā tauranga o te wā. E putai he kōrero ki te whai ao, ki te ao mārama. A tēnā, kia whai tātau i te mārama tanga, i roto i ēnei taonga. Tēnā koutou tamariki mā, nau mai ki tēnei hōtaka o Rāranga Matihiko. Ko Sam Hinari tō kuingoa, ko Jesse Robeson tēnei, and we both work at Te Papa Tonga Rewa here in Te Whanganui Atara. And together with our friends at Waitangi Treaty Ground Te Peto Whenua, Waikato Museum Te Whare Taonga o Waikato and MTG Hawks Bay Tai Ahurere, we've got some awesome activities for you to do at your kāinga all around Kaitiakitanga. So Sam, what does it mean to be a kaitiaki? Well, being a kaitiaki means we have a responsibility to look after and to care for things which are precious. So our job as kaitiaki who work in a museum is to look after the taonga which are kept here. However, another part of our job is to help to support you to be kaitiaki for your taonga as well. So, Jessie, what are taonga? Well, taonga are things that are special, precious and important to us. They can be our words and our stories, special places, unique environments, even the people around us. They're all things that we care for and that we want to look after. So, what have we been up to this series? So in this series, we've been using digital tools to help explore the relationship which we have with taonga in the present and in the future. Nō reira, hia te taki mō te rā nei. Well, today's kaupapa is oaha, being creative. And to explore this, we're going to head to Toy Art here at Te Papa, where our friend Laura is showing us how the museum looks after and displays taonga. Then we're going to come back to the lab where Martin's going to have a go at being creative displaying his taonga. Sound good? Yeah, sounds good to me. Awesome. Let's head over to Laura. Kia ora. I'm Laura. Great to see you at Te Papa. And I'm standing in one of my favourite places. I'm in the art galleries. Maybe you've been here before. We're going to look at some amazing art. And because we're thinking also about kaitiakitanga and oaha, we're going to consider how Te Papa displays art in different ways. And that's important because if we display things well, we're helping the art to tell its own story and also we're helping people to make a personal connection with that artwork. If we look around us now, we can see lots of different creative ways to show the art. Te Papa has to be a good kaitiaki to the art to make sure that everything is safe when it's out on display. So we're going to have a look around and look at some different artworks to spot how Te Papa does this. If you look behind me, you can see a lot of paintings. They're all portraits hanging in amazing frames on this wall. And they all look great. Sometimes art is displayed like this in lots of places, but often there's a bit more space between the paintings. Let's have a look on the floor. You can see some white lines in front of the artworks. And let's consider why those white lines are there. They help to give people a sense of how close they can get to the art. They can't step over that line because then they could potentially damage the artwork. So they're just a guide for the audience. It's part of being a good kaitiaki. If you do want to get close and have a look at some really good detail in these portraits, it is possible to do that. We've got some digital screens which allow you to zoom in and really focus in on the detail within these portraits. Sometimes art needs to be displayed in a different way. If we think about sculpture, for example, sculpture needs to be looked at in the round from every different angle. So to help protect that sculpture, we place it on a plinth. Being on a platform or a plinth means that we can see all around it, not just from the front. You can see every angle and that helps to protect that artwork. It's part of being a good kaitiaki. Moving into this part of the gallery, you can see another artwork that is hanging in the air. It's called an installation and it demands that it has its own special space. 
If we look up, we can see that it's made of lots of different glass spheres or balls, which are attached to colorful ribbons, and they're all hanging from this wire. This artwork's called Indra's Bow, and it's by a New Zealand artist called Tiffany Singh. And it's designed to be hung in this special space. It's a great way to display this art, but it's also keeping it safe. Inside these glass spheres are lots of different things like there's feathers, power shells, and also spices. When you come to this gallery, you'll actually notice that you can smell this artwork before you see it because of the things that are contained within these spheres. That's fantastic. It's quite unusual to smell an artwork as well as see it. If you're interested in what's inside the glass spheres, there's a list here using the same rainbow colors to help you out. This installation is also safely displayed away from hands that might want to touch it. If you look here, you can see there's a glass barrier and that protects the artwork, but it's transparent. So visitors can still see through it. Tapapa's thought all the time about how it can be the best kaitiaki that it can be. If we stand back, we can see that the colors are arranged carefully as a rainbow. The rainbow effect is from the ribbons and also the contents of the spheres. We can also notice the space a little bit more. You can see that there's a window which allows some soft light to throw onto this artwork, as well as the spotlights that are up above. I wonder how you would display your own art and objects if you had a museum. Jess and Sam might be able to help you with this. Over to you. Kia ora, Laura. You know, Jessie, I didn't actually realise how much thought goes into where Tonga actually displayed in the museum. Yeah, everything has a purpose. It's like, what is this? Does it have a back and a front? If so, maybe it can go on a wall. But if it needs to be explored in 360, it needs to go on a plinth. But then they need to think to themselves, well, is the plinth going to be right in the middle of the room where it's going to stop people? Or is it something that maybe needs to be placed more in the corner of a room so people can explore it and be a little bit more contemplative? Yeah, there really is so much to think about. Hmm. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head to Martin in the Learning Lab, who's going to show us different ways of displaying Tonga. Then, using a digital tool called Stop Motion Animation, we're going to explore how people could act around the different Tonga in the museum. Let's go. Hey, kia ora, Martin. Oh, kia ora, Sam. How's it going? Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty good, Martin. How are you going? Yeah, I've been pretty good. I really love what Laura was showing us in the galleries. That was great. Uh, yeah. I've been playing with some ideas here on the computer. Oh, okay, yeah, and how's that going? Do you notice something wrong with this picture? Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, there we go. killed him, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's, that seems like a funny demonstration, but to come in and talk to each other, it's a really good idea to be talking to the person, right? And we're going to be talking about our taonga, our artworks, um, awahatanga, our creativity, and how we might want to present that for other people to look and appreciate in the same way. Now, me not looking at you and talking to you probably will make you feel a certain way, right? Yeah, yeah, it was pretty, pretty strange, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and it kind of makes people feel less important. You probably experience this uh, in different places. If they're not talking to you, you feel like you don't have to listen. And sometimes with our artworks, um, we put them in places so that people can see them and, and engage with them in a, in a certain level. But sometimes strategically, we can place them in ways to make people have questions or to think something odd is going on. So what we've got first is I've got a little uh, set up here, like imagine if it could be a bedroom or a room, and you're about to display some of the artworks that you've made. Now, um, I know we've got a painting sitting there. How's that? This is a, a beautiful painting that Martin did for me prior to filming this in Tēnā koe, Martin. <laughs> Kia ora. Now, the idea of this is we've got a, a painting that we're going to put on the wall. So um, I'm going to get you to think about where you want to place that on the wall. And this little character will be our visitor who's coming in to appreciate this artwork. Okay, well, considering it is such a beautiful painting, I'm going to start by putting it right at the top there. Perfect. So here's my little character. They'll be coming in. 
and probably from afar we'll be able to see this artwork because it's so prominent up in the sky. Yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> now as you get closer and closer and closer, you're going to feel like that painting is over the top of you. Yeah. That might make you feel a certain way too. So mm. I know that if something was over me like that, it might make, make me feel a little bit smaller or that yeah. I'm meant to be looking up at it. So yeah. it's uh, uh, more prominent than I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our artworks can communicate. And so when we use things like, you know, the paintings are talking to me, they're not making words, but they are communicating with us. Yes, cool. Now, imagine if we change that painting around. So I'll get you to place the painting somewhere else. Somewhere else? My choice? Your choice. Okay. Well, let's go for the opposite extreme. Go right down the bottom there. Perfect. Now, if you notice where our character is now, they get to face the work straight on. They're probably looking at you, um, your eye to eye with yeah, them, yeah. which is cool, which is a bit more relatable, right? Like you could probably have a conversation with them yeah. <laughs> rather than them talking to you from above. Yeah, I, I see, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this gives the opportunity for that person to get a little bit closer. And that yep. sometimes can be tricky. That can be where some of the problems in a museum setting might happen, mm -hmm. where people want to get so close, so close, so close. Touch. That they touch yeah, it. Okay. Now, let's try turning that painting upside down and see what happens. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> now, sometimes people like to install things a little bit funny or silly or different. And that difference is actually sometimes a good thing. It helps us to create questions. So how do you think that person's <laughs> feeling now? Well, I mean, if it was me, to go into a room and see a painting like that. I mean, first of all, I might think it's a mistake, but if it was a museum, it's probably not a mistake, I'd guess, yeah. but it's probably trying to communicate something. But to be honest, I'd just be trying to question what it is and I wouldn't have an answer, but trying to find a meaning there, I guess. That's really cool. Now, sometimes it's more thought provoking if we have an artwork like that upside ah, down. Yeah, that yeah. You're wondering, why did they choose to do that? Now, Let's imagine if we put some other things in this room and we think of it like an installation, like Tiffany Singh's Indra, Indra's Bow. Uh, an installation thinks about the whole space. So we've got some um, painted strips here. And I'll get yeah. you just to place them on the wall. Place them on the wall. Let's go somewhere over here, right? Eh? And what you'll notice is, well, we have a portrait of a person. That's really easy to understand that it's a person. Sometimes there's artworks that are abstract, which means they're not very direct. They don't look like a person or they don't uh, look like a thing but they're really about movement and emotions and color yeah. kind of like the Tiffany Singh work and <clears throat> what you would notice if you were in this artwork if our character decided to be kind of looking at both I think they might start having some questions yeah because these two works are not the same they're different types or styles mm. and so what an installation or when a curator puts artworks together we start thinking about how are these works meant to be together yeah. and what that conversation is. Maybe that's a portrait of the artist who did the paintings or maybe there's a connection to the painting that inspired the artwork that was made. Well, that's really interesting. I mean, even just in the painting alone, you've been able to show that it has three completely different meanings depending on how it's placed on the wall, where it's placed on the wall. So there's actually so much that you can read into it just through uh, a tongue or a piece of art's position and where, where it's placed really. So man, so much to think about. If someone like me who's not really uh, <laughs> got a passion for art in the same way that other people do, it's, this is amazing to walk in and learn about these things for the first time. So yeah, great kilda, Martin. The good thing about art is it is about interpretation and what you think matters. Mm. So uh, what you feel about what's happening is really important. Mm. The best thing you can do is have a conversation. Yeah, Great. Perfect. Cause yeah, we draw upon each other's strengths. Awesome. Now, I know in uh, some of our first episodes, we looked at wakahuya, and we made this beautiful one out of Lego. It's a pretty good tile. Maybe <laughs> you've made one as well. We're going to use this as our uh, object, our taonga, that we think is really cool and really special. Cool. And we're going to use stop animation, and we're going to use a program called Clap Motion to demonstrate how someone might interact with it. And then maybe ways we could protect it because sometimes people might interact with them the way that we didn't intend. Okay. Okay. Cool. Now, clap motion is an extension that you can uh, download from Google, and there's lots of different stop animation programs. Now, I know Alicia used a program called Cloud Stop Motion in her episode about Awa. All programs that use stop animation kind of work the same way, where they're taking a series of photographs. 
that you play back as a video. So I'm just going to open it up and we see clap motion. Now, as soon as I click, it should open up and I'm rolling. Now, just look at clap motion and I'm going to explain a few of the icons you might see around you. Now, if you're at home, quickest thing to do is to start playing with this um, program. You can, take, you can use spacebar to take photographs. Cool. which I really like. It was really handy. So as soon as I hit spacebar, you'll see a photograph appears down nice the Nice and easy. Okay. Now, if I keep hitting spacebar, now I've got five photographs. We tend to like to work in pairs. So there's an animator and a camera operator, which is really useful. And so then it becomes about our communication as well. And if we have this character here, I kind of got a paint bucket. Let's pretend they've got a bit of paint <laughs> in their bucket that we probably don't want them to put on our tile list. <laughs> so we're going to do a quick fire animation to uh, help understand the program. And then we're going to be kaitaki of our taonga and put in some safety measures and see what happens next. Now, what I'm going to get you to do is I'm going to get you to move your character in. Mm -hmm. And I can see it on screen just now. And as you move it, I want you to move it just a little bit at a time and move your hands out of the way. Now, if your hands are still in the photograph, there's no mystery we know that your hand is moving the object. <laughs> so the whole trick that we're trying to get is that the object is moving itself. Okay? Cool. So I'll put it back there. Oh, actually, I'll put it there because we've got a few photographs already. And I'll hit spacebar, and I'll get you to move it in a little bit. Perfect. Now your hands are out of the way. Out of the way, yeah. Photograph. <laughs> Perfect. Photograph. 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 Getting a bit quicker, aren't we? Look at this teamwork. Photograph. Now, our communication gets better and better and better that I almost don't need to say photograph. But as you work with someone, it's a really good way to start is to figure out how we might work together. All right. Perfect. It's getting pretty close now. All right. Now, <laughs> Because our character doesn't have any movable arms, it's going to look a bit hard to try and put the paint on there. Yep. And there's lots of little techniques you can do. If you've ever seen a storyboard, movies aren't always shot from one angle. So you can always move your camera around. Or what we might do is bring all the objects to the camera itself so it looks closer. We might look at its face first because I think it's just contemplating whether it's going to do something, which is probably the wrong thing in the gallery, and put <laughs> paint on the object. Okay? So okay. what I might do as I will bring the, the object up to the camera and I will we'll leave the base where it is. If I get you just to place this behind like that, okay. we'll pretend that I've got a little bit closer. Let's have a look, see what that's like. Okay. Some deep thinking going on uh, there. Yep, getting a bit close. Now, this paint we're going to get even closer. So <laughs> let's pretend that that paint is being put on the object. Now the focus is a bit out, but for the purpose of what we're doing, that's fine. So we might photograph, 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 photograph for the hands putting the paint on. Now what we're going to do is we'll put our object back. Okay. So put just the lid on top. We'll put our character back where they were. And now the paint is on the object. <laughs> so what we've done is the person's walked in, we've zoomed in for when they've done the act of putting paint on the object, and now they're going to walk away because they're probably thinking, not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll start taking photographs again, and I'll get you to move the character out. And we might move bigger chunks this time to make it look like it's moving faster. Okay. So we'll do a okay. turn. Yep. And then we'll do a... Perfect. Time to get out of here. Photograph. Photograph. They've left my Photograph. mark and ruined this, this beautiful taonga. And let's do the sneaky look back. And gone. Perfect. Now, once you've had a little play and you've done your animation, <laughs> taking your images, we're just going to hit the play. It's actually really easy. There's an icon at the top left. Play animation. And let's see what that looks like. <laughs> oh, no. We've got video evidence of the, um, the act. <laughs> now... Just to finish off, because we're using this program, we're going to put some safety measures in place. We might take that paint off yes, our taonga. That's good stuff. Because that actually ruins the experience for other people. 
and we've set this up in a way that we want people to appreciate the thing we've made and we've put it in the right place. What I think we might do is I think we need to elevate our taonga. So we'll put probably these jingle blocks are pretty good. We might pretend that we've got a plinth and I know Laura was talking about how plinths can sometimes be used to elevate an object. Yeah. So when this person comes in, they're actually getting to see all those details yeah. that are in and around it. Cool. Okay. I'm going to get you to put a line around our taonga to keep it safe from our paint troublesome uh, trouble person. And as you do it, I only want you to draw probably about that much at a time. Okay. And I'll take photographs. Okay? Yeah. So I'm gonna establish my shot with a few photographs first. Yep. Space bar, space bar, space bar. Always good to start with a few. Here we go. I'll Responsibility. How straight can Sam draw a line? Alright. Photograph. Photograph. Who holds a pen like that? Oh no, this line is not very straight. Let's go right around the back. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, go from that side. Yep, yeah, one. Photograph. And we're there. Photograph. Now that looks like a good guideline for people. Well, it looks like a guideline, but... <laughs> <laughs> that if they were to come to the museum, they should see this line and know that actually we're yeah. trying to keep the object safe just like we do here at uh, Te Papa Tongarewa. And we want to protect the object for future generations and for other people to appreciate. Yeah. Let's see if our character can observe those rules okay. and hopefully not put paint on our object. Okay. okay? <laughs> I will hit play so you can see that line appearing first and oh, then yeah, we'll cool. go through the whole animation. <clears throat> there you go. Right. So just by slowly adding in uh, lines at a time, it feels like the line is animating itself. <laughs> All right. Cool. Let's get this sneaky person involved again. I'm just going to stop at the end. So you can click at the end here just to make sure that you're adding footage at the end. And I'm going to click on back to camera because I need to go. Oh, that's why I was camera. putting the person behind and I wasn't showing yep. anything. Okay. So if you have a look here, my <laughs> camera is not live because it's the photograph. Back to camera. There you go. The old, Hands back in. The old wiggle test. All right. Yep, that's cool. So we're going to get our character come in. They've got their paint bucket there. Let's hope they observe this a bit better it's than hope. last time. All right, photograph. Perfect. Oh, we're getting really good teamwork here. Now, I'm getting pretty good. They haven't got your fingers yet. That's great. Now, they've obviously come into the gallery with a paint bucket, which means they're probably up to no good. But that super line there is going to actually stop them. Okay? Oh, the that, super line, okay. <laughs> there's some invisible force field that we've just created with that line, which is great. <laughs> so what we can do is take a few photographs. They're contemplating the line and the object in front of them. Yeah. They can't do too much, so no. they probably get a chance to observe the object yeah. in its entirety. We've protected the integrity, the mana of that object. Yeah. The oaha, our creativity, is now intact and other people can appreciate their object. Cool. We might get that person to continue on their way this way. Perfect. Awesome. And gone. And gone. All right, here we go. Security Come measures. Checking it out. Gone. Hey, late. <laughs> Great, well thank you so much for that Martin. So in this video, we had someone bring paint into the museum. Now, obviously in real life, that's just something that wouldn't happen. No, we don't have people bringing in paint. It was a good demonstration of what not to do in the gallery. Yeah. Okay, well thank you so much again Martin. I'm excited to go and tell Jesse all about it. Kilda. Kilda. Kilda, Jesse. Did you see the cool things that me and Martin just made using stop motion animation? Yeah, it's really cool how you're able to use that to show that you're kaitiaki of the art, but also kaitiaki of the ohatanga for the artist as well. Yeah, that's right. And the cool thing about it was it was actually a really easy tool to use. So what we'd love you to do is give it a go at home. Show it to your whānau, and if you like to, we'd love you to share it on social media using the hashtag below. That's all from us for now. We've really loved doing these digital activities with you guys. And if you're looking for more, check out the Raranga Matahiko website. Hopefully, we'll see you again. Kaki te anō. <laughs>